Now, without further ado, allow me to welcome a first speaker of tonight, the very distinguished and eminent product leader, Mr. Satya Prasad. Satya Prasad is a senior director at Alliance, Alliance Data Card Services. He's a cross-functional IT leader with 21 plus years of experience with an effective record of accomplishment in leading application product development, centers of excellence in business analyst, uh, quality assurance services focusing on automation, infrastructure operations, technology management, information security, and governance across banking, financial services, and telecom industry. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Prasad. We are thrilled to have you here with us tonight. Handing the session over to you. Hey, uh, uh, thanks, Shamna. Thanks for the nice introduction. So good evening, everybody. I uh, just want to you know, start off with this session. Uh, look forward to hearing uh, more questions from you and you know we can take it on from there. So the first question that was asked is, is, uh, is you know, technicality required for a product management job? So the answer to this question is very simple. It depends, it depends on the product that you, you are going to work on, right? So it's very important to know uh, that it all, how technical one should be depends on the product the person is going to work on. If the product you're working on is a, say a technical product, like for example, if it's on an API or on, on a cloud product, then it's better for you to know some aspects of being technical. Uh, not all products need technology awareness. It's also very important to be aware that uh, it's also important to know where is one in a product life cycle journey. So in case if you're in a startup, you know, sometimes it, it does require you to be, uh, you know, uh, hands-on uh, from a, you know, techni technology standpoint. But if you're in a large corporate, uh, corporates do have scrum masters and tech leads. So one can be non-technical. It also depends on how much you want to influence people and your technical depth and awareness is very key, uh, you know, in case you want to transition into a full-time product manager. So not all products require technical knowledge. So I'll just pause here for a moment uh, to see if uh, anyone has any, any questions or anything, uh, you know, uh, with regard to being technical in a, uh, or non-technical in a product management role. So the next, so the next thing that I'd, I'd really like to uh, you know uh, talk about is hey, in order to go and transition into a product management role, one thing is very key. It's very key to understand the whole product life cycle, right? Product management expertise becomes very key. It's important for you and to know what is the product roadmap, how you can think strategically, how you can have a vision of the product you know, how, how you can make sure that you have a roadmap. So product management expertise become a very key. So it depends on how you, you know, you, you articulate yourself in your resume and how you project yourself in, in order to be a product manager. So technicality is not a necessity to be a product manager, but product management concepts, awareness is key to be a successful product manager. So if you look at some of the skills uh, from a product management perspective, it's, you know, it's about knowing the product roadmaps. One very important skill is communication, the ability to think strategically uh, from a product standpoint, the ability to network, get the job done out of the engineering team, to interact with your customers, to know, you know what they're feeling, to know uh, to understand their needs their wants their desires the ability to think strategically one very key aspect of, of a product management role is to interpret data to make sure there are patterns you understand patterns you understand the limitations of the product you understand what could be the possible opportunities what would be threats apply some frameworks on the product so what happens here is the key here is to have a very good research skill. It's very important to be curious and have the ability to reflect and write. So one's ability to become a product manager is based on understanding the whole product life cycle and having that product management expertise. One thing that IPL will definitely help you to achieve. So it's very important. 
the other thing is that you should really do is when you're positioning yourself as a product manager, you know, you should be able to articulate, you know, you should be able to articulate as to how you're able to, you know, uh, do this role from a strategic standpoint, how you'll be able to achieve with your expertise. So one thing is to note that not all, all, uh, all product managers are technical. And uh, it's, uh, that is very key. Uh, and it's very important how you position yourself as a, as a product manager. So some of the paths some people take from a product management journey is, you know, some people start off uh, with doing a lot of business analysis, uh, you know, uh, moving up the value chain of becoming a product owner and from becoming a product owner, taking on the responsibilities of becoming a product manager. So that's another approach you can take, uh, you know, uh, becoming a product owner and then becoming a product manager. But it's very key that you should have product management expertise, right? And uh, that is uh, very important from a product management perspective. One, uh, one thing is that uh, your ability to network, your ability to collaborate with the sales team, uh, with the marketing team, uh, with the engineering team provides a key to the success of the product. So that that is uh, so that then that makes communication a very important factor and networking a very important skill. So these are some of the aspects that one I, one would look at when one would want to transition into a product manager. And you know definitely you know there is insecurity in case if it's a technology product and you don't have technology experience, right? So there would be insecurity. So for that reason, uh, sometimes it's okay to get a little bit of hands-on and improve your technology knowledge. If it is to know a programming language like Python, that would really help. Or if it is to know something else, it, it would really help from a technology standpoint. Making sure that you understand the technology jargon, uh, probably a little bit about the framework like using Agile in, in, in your product life, uh, you know, life cycle journey. So these are some of the aspects that you know, one would look at you know, uh, from a product management journey. So one, one, uh, see, one of the questions that is asked, you know, one is the questions that is asked by Archana is, how can one leverage non-technical knowledge to be a PM? See, non-technical knowledge is based on your expertise, right? So when you look at non-technical knowledge, uh, you're not only looking at communication skills, you're also looking at the product that you're going to build. So your research skills will be really important. Your curiosity on building that product roadmap, the product vision is very important. So importance is to ha have these uh, uh, you know, uh, non-technical skills uh, that can really help you to leverage. These non-technical skills, if you're really looking at it, one is being, uh, one is communication. The other one is being curious. Uh, the other one, if you really look at it, is uh, the ability to network and the ability to plan and execute on the prod product. So in large corporates, you will definitely get uh, support from the engineering team or the marketing team or, in, or the sales team. In startups, uh, you know there is a, a little bit of challenge. Uh, there could be an exp uh, there could be an expectation of, on being a little bit of hands-on. So uh, uh, if you look at uh, that particular skill, sometimes what happens is if if, if you're in a startup, uh, you know UX UI uh, skills could help you to be a better product manager. So these are definitely uh, skills. I hope Archana, I answered your question uh, with regard to that. Um, you know, uh, uh, Suvikram uh, asked this question that he's from FMCG. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think, you know, uh, let's add on a little more to uh, uh, Rachana's question, if I'm not wrong. So let me introduce the next speaker as well. Sure. And uh, we'll take the session forward from there. For the next uh, speaker, let's hear it from our acclaimed and admired speaker, Mr. Sai Sadish Vedam. So uh, a quick intro to Mr. Vedam. He was most recently the director of product at Oracle. He is a practitioner coach, mentor, and the chief product officer at the Institute of Product Leadership. Mr. Vedam, uh, your thoughts on the question answered? Well, no, thank you, Shama. Uh, hey, Satya, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, no, I'm just uh, listening to the wisdom coming from Satya as a hiring manager perspective. I'm sure he is, uh, you know, uh, you know, thinking from that point of view and trying to answer some often and common questions that are there. But uh, I think, you know, continue Satya and then we will take the questions together maybe after you finish it, right? So I'll let you go ahead with that. Yeah. Sure, uh, thanks, thanks sir. 
So, uh, uh, so coming into a uh, hiring, right? Uh, uh, you know, Sai has uh, brought up on an important hiring. So, uh, from a hiring perspective, right, it's important to have the key jargon men uh, or the key skills that a product manager would have uh, in your resume. So, it's very important that you mention those in the resume so that they get attracted uh, by these, uh, you know, these websites. So, uh, you know, these come into the hands of the recruiter, which then position yourselves. And uh, so resume plays an important role as to how you can, you know, position yourself as a product manager with the relevant skills the product manager has. One could be certification in the product management areas. That could be one. One could be, you know, using your skills, like, you know, uh, like, uh, for example, giving an example of a project that you did where you thought strategically right where you understood what the customer needs and you know providing those kind of information so one in order to get selected you have to position yourself a good resume a product management resume would help to position yourself to come from the first checklist the second one would be the interviewing skills right like uh, you know questions typically asked in a product manager role how do you position yourself in answering those questions and you know no question is a bad question from the hiring manager so it's very important to put yourself in the shoes of the hiring manager to see what skills he's trying to elicit out of that particular question that he's asking and there are very important you know uh, courses uh, that uh, the product institute has in terms of how do you position yourself and how do you take the interview you know from a, from a product manager role perspective so the institute definitely helps you with that so one aspect is making sure that you have the right words the right uh, jargon mentioned in your in your resume and uh, be aware uh, it, it needs to be ethically right making sure that you have done that work in in the past right and that is one and uh, the other one is when you take the interview and when you take the interview going through that whole life journey of the product life cycle making sure you have the various aspects whether it is sales whether it is a uh, little knowledge on finance the roadmap from a product manager perspective the vision uh, some of the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome those challenges as a product manager and understanding the whole customer journey it's these are important aspects from a product manager role perspective so uh, uh, so uh, one question that is asked by govind raj here is you know he's from an fmcg sales background will this program be suitable for me as i feel it's more uh, it is more uh, will this program will be suitable for me as i feel it's more inclined to it um, <clears throat> I, I really like to, I, I'll give my opinion, sir, and then you can give your opinion. Uh, 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 you know, Govind Raju, just let you, let, let, uh, you know, product manager role is not only for IT. It is for anyone from any background. You can be a product manager for any product. It need not be only a technology-based product, right? If you look at the origin of product management, it, it even started with a simple thing like brand management. Like, you can be a, uh, you can be a product manager for a soap, not necessarily a technology product right so with your sales skills with your sales acumen you could definitely be a better product manager provided you know the product management domain in terms of the life cycle in terms of the skills that the product manager needs to have along with uh, the knowledge in sales sir over to you sir uh, you know uh, no i think i think you know uh, before we jump into answering these um, you know very pertinent questions uh, what I would like to do is uh, take a step back a little bit, right? And, and understand, you know, the 65, 69 people that I see joining today at 8 p.m. on a weekday shows there is some serious interest or, you know, while, while hundreds of people are sitting and watching Netflix, these good souls have joined here to know what it takes to get uh, into product management from non-tech background, right? Now, uh, two things I would like to do. One is, I think, just uh, elaborate a little bit about when you hear this. And I often hear this, and I, you know, uh, here Satya is taking the hiring manager perspective as to what he would look for in a person when you are looking to hire into product role. The perspective that I want to provide is as a, a mentor and a coach for product professionals, right? So uh, I work every day you know, with at least dozens of people in trying to understand what motivates them, what drives them, and then what kind of questions come. 
So I spent about more than 20 plus years in building technology products. So I am su directly super not qualified to talk about this topic, right? Because I have a hardcore tech background, but because I worked with uh, hundreds of the aspiring product managers, I have learned a lot of the things along the way, right? So I would like to bring that perspective into this. But um, before jumping into that, let's understand when we say non-tech background, right? Now this can be misinterpreted or misunderstood in different ways. So here is my, uh, you know, definition or rather clarity on that based on various conversations. One could be non-technology background, right? And that means that, you know, I never had a chance to learn technology, hands-on work on technology, you know, could be development, could be engineering, could be quality assurance, quality testing and all of that. The other interpretation that I've heard from many people is non-technical, right? Now, this non-technical has a slightly different color to it, right? Which means, hey, I'm not even comfortable using the tools that are normally used in the work environment, like the collaboration tools, productivity tools, or, or some research tools and all of that, right? So I, I guess what we want to spend time here is more on the non-technology part of it. Uh, because the technical part, I think it is a given, even if you're a teacher for an elementary school today, the expectation is you should be very comfortable in creating a poll in Zoom and, and uh, or Google Meet or whatever and launch it, right? So that's expectations are being reset everywhere, right? So let's start with, I think, with that non-technology, right, Satya? Um, sure. and, and one another uh, baseline would help, at least me, you know, in addressing these questions is, who is our audience here, right? So if we can... If I can, you know, while you were talking, we were just, I was just trying to get a poll up and running because it's an essential skill, by the way, now, right? So let's launch that poll to see and ask some few questions to understand our audience a little bit better, right? Um, you know, what is the overall, can, can we launch that poll? Mr. Vedam, you can launch the poll. I can launch. So let me quickly launch the poll. Um, so there are very few questions, uh, four or five very simple questions for all of you. I encourage you to all quickly take uh, this poll just so it helps us, uh, you know, address your questions in a very crisp and specific way, right? Otherwise, this whole topic can go on for a few hours, right? And and with the with the uh, you know experience that combined experience, industry experience that you have here, you know, we can keep on talking about it, all right? Great. So. Um, let, let me just give one 15 more seconds. Uh, encourage you all to take interesting results. I see uh, several of you, uh, interesting, 19% of you are already product managers. So I'm kind of wondering what Netflix show are you missing here, right? Uh, by being here. Great. Uh, I think we are predominantly we see uh, project managers or program management role. Um, and I would love to know, at least in the chat, if you can, uh, post what uh, what did what did I miss here in terms of others, right? Would love to know what those roles are. Uh, again, apologies if I missed some crucial role that I am not familiar with, uh, ignorant about it. Uh, help me, uh, you know, educate me on that. Okay, great. So I think we have uh, a, a good view into our audience right now here. Uh, let me stop that poll then. Uh, there are only two questions that I'm seeing. What about the third or fourth question? How do I go navigate to... See, I, I don't have the essential skill yet, uh, clearly. <laughs> okay, so let me share those results for all of your benefit. Okay, great. So now that we know, I think majority are uh, project and program managers uh, and some others would love to know what others is. Um, and then Satya, you and I can tackle these questions in just a few minutes, right? Sure. Now, a uh, couple of uh, things that I would like to bring about again from a, a person who has been interacting with people who have been aspiring to get into this product roles, right? Now, I will slightly take a, a devil's advocate position for a few minutes, right? All of you, uh, in the sense that I want to talk about what are the advantages of having a tech background, right? Let's understand that first, because product management responsibilities vary depending on uh, where you are in the organization, what kind of organization are you in, what kind of products you're building, 
right? So it's a, it's not a one answer fits all for everything. So if I want, to, you know, I will, uh, there are many, many advantages, of course, I will try to point out three key things. The first one is having a technology background will help you generally better informed about your products, right? In the sense that it, the product is not a black box to you anymore because you understand this product, you understand sometimes under the hood, although you may not be skilled in knowing what all technologies went into build, building that, what architectures were used, what deployment methods were used, what uh, you know, cloud or non-cloud cloud deployment was used, all of that, forget all that. But at least your product, you will have a better understanding. It's not a black box anymore. And the second part to that is you will also better understand the product development life cycle, right? And again, when I'm saying product development life cycle, while you know the bias could be here from a software or IT or technology products, this is common across uh, non-tech products as well, right? It could be FMCG, it could be hard, uh, hardware products, it could be you know tangible physical products, uh, embedded systems or hardware or any of these things. There is a product li uh, life cycle there, right? So having this technology background uh, will definitely help you understand that part better. The second important and practical advantage that I've seen having a technology background is, uh, you know, as a PM or even as a product owner, you are collaborating with cross-functional teams, right? You will all constantly collaborating with the engineering teams, with the QA teams, with the designer teams, sometimes with marketing teams and all of that. Now, as a person who is orchestrating process, one very important aspect that you should gain is gain the respect of this team, right? While it may sound silly, but it's very important because you, you, you can't just come in and say, here are the top three features that we should build. Without building that credibility, those conversations become very difficult, right? Now, if you have this technology background, and if, if you are predominantly time, spending time with the engineers, then asking those right questions and signaling that you are, do understand that technology, you know that technology will garner that respect and it makes your life very easy, right, in, in a cross-functional team. So that is the second advantage I would say. Of the third. And the third one, again, there are many, but uh, I want to distill this into uh, three of these things, right? The third one is, um, it will help you look at how technology is evolving and the threats that are evolving to your current status, right? And you will be able to uh, reorganize and recalibrate your direction, your strategy uh, much better if you are able to grasp the, the impact of that new technologies. I, I don't know how many of you um, come from the uh, you know electronics background, semiconductor background, but there is a tectonic shift that is happening right now, right? Uh, the move away from risk processors to uh, sys, sys processors to risk processors, which is you know the typical Intel processors that you hear, the AMD core processor, they're all based on CISC architectures. Now Apple, with their own chipset, which they've been working for 12 years now have launched this amazing chipset called M1 chipset, which is in the new MacBook Pros. Now that takes a completely different architecture. And you know you might ask, so what? What is the benefit of it? And I'll tell you one simple thing, and then you will realize how powerful this is going to be. Today, if you need to power your laptops, you will need a 110 volts uh, charger, which uh, uses about 30 to 40 watts of power to charge your battery. Right now, with this chipset, you will need a mobile charger. A mobile charger will power your laptops 20% quicker, 50% longer. Now, that is just one of the best. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up is if you are not looking ahead and be able to understand the technology and come back and see how is this going to impact us, there is a potential threat or there is an opportunity. Right. So that way, this technology background will help. Right. Now, the, of course, uh, the, the question here is that we are all gathered here is to ask, so if I don't have this technology background, is it possible to get into the product management role? The answer to me, I wouldn't say no, I wouldn't say absolutely yes, because that's not true in my view. It really depends on two things. 
if your product is a technical product and if your customer is a technical customer right either one is true then having that technology background becomes very important otherwise absolutely not right so now in that context you know i i can share some of my tips but we will get back to the, 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 this discussion so satya if you have some other tips or wisdom we can share and then slowly we can pick up questions and start answering that so 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 sai uh, as sai mentioned you know it's uh, absolutely you know it's very important to be aware of of the vision and if you are able to, the ability to think strategically uh, from a product management side so what happens is this this whole product management domain that expertise needs to come out if you are uh, from a non technical background so that that is very key to your success as a product manager because what happens is it's not only in the planning it's also in the execution and the execution can come out while while you work with the engineering team or the qa team or the design team and your ability to network with the sales as well as the uh, you know uh, uh, the sales as well as the marketing teams so these aspects form very key uh, to one uh, who's coming from a non technical background so you may be technical that is one you may be non technical but uh, the other aspects is do you have that business skills in you so those uh, you know so so the aspect uh, where uh, where you can really uh, uh, fine tune yourself is do you know about the product do you know your core product management expertise that will really help you to excel as a product manager especially if you are working in a with a non technical background great so i was just uh, while you were talking about that satya i was just quickly glancing through the questions and um, you know i would definitely want to take a, a slightly different approach and you know we can definitely get to one on one questions that we can answer but i'm trying to see how we can how i can address as many questions as possible right i see common themes and believe me this is not the first uh, interaction that we are he hearing these questions right so and these are genuine uh, common questions that we have so here are uh, uh, five tips i would say let me let me put it uh, that specific that prescriptive on how to get into a product role from a role wherever you are you might be in project management uh, program management a business analysis designer a marketer a sales person each of those roles have unique skill sets and competencies right so don't forget to leverage all of them but given all these roles which at least i in my view i am considering as non technology roles what what are the ways that you can how can you actually now start thinking into getting into this product role right so in my you know based on my uh, conversations and learning here are five tips the first one is demonstrate technical curiosity right it doesn't matter whether you are a technologist or not but the curiosity as to how things work right getting under the skin of it now it could be the the mobile phone in your house the the uh, the new wifi router that you may have bought and it stopped working don't bother you know it's on anyway not working so instead of anyway you're going to buy a new one just rip it apart and understand now uh, the the point i'm trying to make is the technical curiosity is something that unfortunately cannot be taught it has to be inculcated right so we have to make a conscious effort to get to that so technical curiosity is one thing the second and very important for all these roles to get into product because these are very critical in the product roles customer context and satya already explained this about it right so when you say and i want to broaden this and say customer context because a key element of that is customer empathy right meaning understanding the the uh, the world of your customer what problem are they trying to solve what challenges are they facing in trying to solve that problem in the context of the job that they are trying to do of course right not i'm not suggesting that you go and deal with their life problems you know there is another place and and products for that right but uh in fact one one very practical tip and i have done this in my life and i've encouraged everybody in my team when i was working at uh, oracle do this is go and spend two weeks in customer support because customer support is a phenomenal place to understand about your customer 
often they come with all kinds of questions about your product the issues the escalations right the calls that they have now you can be just a, a fly on the wall listener but still learn a lot about your customer how are they using this product that you have given them why are they facing certain challenges where you thought there won't be a problem right uh, so uh, if you get a chance and i think all of you will have this chance if you take a proactive step is go and join those meetings of customer support if they are running make friends first of all make friends with customer support right take them for a coffee or a beer or whatever it is works and then get into that right so customer context is very important third one is market context right now all of you should you know the in, in product management role having a good understanding of market analysis market research competitive analysis all of uh, sizing and opportunity analysis all of this becomes very very important now you may not have those skills right now and many of us don't come with those skills which means you have to plan to acquire those skills right now you should look at a structured way of learning this thing i'll come to that skills parts in a minute but let me just try and before it fades away from my memory uh, let me talk about those five tips right the second the third tip was market context the fourth one is business context now what is this business context right you need to understand business models now business model often people confuse it with revenue models but the business model is how is a, you know what problem is a company trying to solve to whom is it trying to solve what uh, uh, how what product are you building or a solution that you are building to solve that problem how are you going to make that product available to your customers how are you going to make money out of it how are you going to acquire these customers right there is a whole bunch of stuff that is there in business a lot of innovation today is happening in business models right you will see business model innovation as 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 a common theme that is there now this is an absolutely important skill for a product manager right now there are certain stages where you will need to propose new business models uh, to do that but even understanding your current company and your current products business model is very important now while there are core lot of core product skill i also want to emphasize on soft skills or the skills that are important as a individual right so uh, an absolutely critical skill is storytelling now i would i often say that a number one job of a product manager is storytelling now, people laugh at me because you know i'm trivializing it but no the ability to hold the attention of your audience for 10 minutes and then influence them to take an action that you want to take is such a critical skill right so storytelling abilities is really important that is the fourth one uh, now fifth one i would just say two things right one is um, you know you must be a hustler right you know don't take this the wrong way but uh, in a professional world it's called getting things done gtd right which means you need to be the person action oriented because there are dependencies and if things don't get done there are severe consequences on business right if you are an individual contributor working in your own silo the consequences of delays on you might not be such huge but if you are now responsible to driving this product right um, and, and depending on where you are the consequences could be severe so getting th things done uh, is another uh, trait and skill that you need to do now you might be wondering okay these are all nice but i may not have many of those things what is the approach that we can take right the approach that i would normally suggest is go and learn this skill from anywhere today you can sit in the comfort of your home go to coursera go to youtube go to whatever thing that works for you linkedin learning and try and learn this but also remember just by watching certain videos you are not going to learn anything many of you know that and i have learned it you have learned it you that that hard truth right so which means how do i now apply what i am learning into a context in the context of a project or a product or an idea or some initiative so you have to bring it to that hands on approach that is when you can say you learned the skill right Be why because now you will be able to demonstrate that to people 
unless you demonstrate that you know a particular skill and especially the skills that we talked about just by putting in your resume unfortunately is not going to get you many places right so start thinking in terms of there are many places today to go and learn that particular area but what is how should i approach learning this in a hands on way right so that's uh, i want to leave you guys with that thoughts uh, you know that i wanted to share um satya you know feel free to go ahead and do and then we can see what what q questions specific questions we can answer sure uh, and just to add to what sai said you know uh, we as adults learn everything in it through action right uh, it's not that we just go mug up a few concepts and go and you know uh, are able to go and tell a story so uh, you know once you do a real life uh, product management uh, exercise uh, where you you know build a product strategically and you know uh, walk it through from inception uh, conceptualization uh, through making it uh, to making it a reality as a product that whole life cycle that whole journey of learning will create that skill or expertise that you will need as a product manager so like sir said he, you know he said you could you could go to any you could go to any area you know any particular area from a coaching standpoint uh, but it's very important to uh, see if you can build those skills so uh, i see there are close to about uh, 25 question uh, and answers that are there so one of the first questions that uh, was asked here sir is there are many services jobs in india tech non tech support roles yeah. i am i am one among them i know it's not possible would would love to hear what route do you have for people who are interested in tech but no technical background Hmm. Interesting question. So, so now uh, one of the skills uh, which was uh, told uh, was from a product management responsibility was basically uh, having that technical curiosity. So, getting to know about technical curiosity is to basically understand a few things of the technical domain. It, it could be basic knowledge like okay, uh, uh, in terms of the architecture style, like a client server, getting that jargon right, whether it's client server architecture or whether it's on the cloud. these days so making sure you understand a uh, basic technical curiosity uh, of the uh, product so one is basically understanding what kind of you know whether it's a client server application whether it's a cloud based application that's one area the other thing that you can have is uh, you know to have a little bit of html css uh, knowledge that could enhance a uh, product manager or responsibility so you know uh, so these technical knowledge will definitely help you to build you know uh, will build that product management uh, curiosity and will help you uh, to develop these skills and be a better product manager there are a, a few list of skills but uh, one of the other skills is you know having a pro programming knowledge knowledge uh, responsibility so uh, so for a person who who has a technical inclination and who has the ability to think technically it's very important to know the technical uh, jargon from a technology perspective the next question uh, sir uh, was asked was uh, here uh, is from a ba and a po experience can yeah. i transition to a product management so if you would like so, to answer this uh, that would be really great yeah no i was just sc scrolling through the questions and i was thinking um, you know we'll prioritize by the way i'm yeah. a true product manager so i want to prioritize we can't do 25 so we'll prioritize here now for mr the vedam mr prasad just sorry to interrupt but uh, i also said in the beginning that you know the audience will get to interact with you live because uh, you know they can come online and you can they can ask your question their see, questions directly to you now this is this is exactly the life of a product manager you decide to prioritize based on what you think is important suddenly the top management will come and say hey hang on a minute there is a higher priority thing please go ahead shama open it up absolutely for so audience just to remind you you can raise your hands and i shall unmute you you can have a one on one with our speakers right away and get your uh, doubts cleared don't be shy uh, friendly people here <laughs> Yes I Okay see. so we have the first uh, question from Priti Vandana uh, but uh, Mr Vedam uh, if you could just kindly give me the host access then I can just unmute him oh, I'm so sorry for that no, yeah no so because you were launching the polls and then I had to transfer it but sure. let's take it from just there Just give me a second I will transfer Sure So Priti keep your question ready and uh, you can ask the question to our speaker
Yep. Preeti, go ahead and ask a question. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. yes. Okay, great. Uh, so my question is, I'm uh, from a marketing background. And uh, what I understood uh, the skills required for uh, uh, you know, product management is more or less one part is development, definitely, and the roadmap. And uh, in the roadmap itself, a marketing person's role comes in at many places. From the customer su success to uh, uh, you know business aspect to the marketing aspect, which Sai said. So how uh, do you think? Uh, so I am a non-technical background, but I have spent uh, years in the technology field, like the B two B field. Uh, so uh, if you suggest me uh, what kind of you know evolution I should see in my role uh, as a project man, project uh, sorry product manager or product marketing. Role yeah. should I start with? Yeah, very how good do, question. Very how good question. can so, I transition? Yeah, Preeti, when you say marketing, yeah. uh, which marketing are you specifically talking? I mean, there are seven types of marketing uh, popularly, right? Corporate marketing, Marcom, technical marketing, uh, digital marketing, product marketing, brand okay. marketing, a lot of things. Brand marketing, uh, corporate marketing, as okay. well as you know, lead gen and demand gen. Ah, kind of. Okay, got it. And the strategy so, group. So, yes. Strategic marketing, rather. True. Now, uh, remember one of the one of the areas that I talked about, the context that I talked about, right? Customer context, market context, and business context. Then there is innovation context and process context. And story I didn't touch about also. that. I didn't touch about the other two, but these two things, right? Three Correct. things. Now, Correct. in that, if you look at the market context, there are certain competencies and skills that one need to have in the context of acquisition. Right. Customer acquisition is such a critical thing today for any product and it's a very specialized skills. Right. Okay. And typically good marketers, right, have a, a, at least a hands on experience on the entire. I'm sure, you know, the top of the funnel and yeah, yeah, of all of that. Right. So coming up with that strength, with that knowledge, with that understanding and developing the other context right now, how do I understand this customer? What are they trying to do? Uh, what jobs are they trying to accomplish? What are the challenges that they are facing? And hence, how is our product or some other product trying to solve it? What are the gaps in that? And hence, what do we need to do in a product to sell, right? That's one part of the customer context. Now, okay. you can come in into the product role with the expertise and understanding of customer acquisition strategies. Right. Okay. So that's okay. where you can play a strong role and you don't absolutely need to be a developer or even have the development understanding technology. That's okay. the point that we're trying to make here. So okay. if I were to take step back and some, you know, you know, generalize this a little bit, all of you come from some unique experiences, unique skill sets, right? You can definitely leverage those in the context of a product role, because even I have spent 15 years in product management. I still think it is a chaotic environment. Everything is needed there. All skills are needed. So if you can come with one speciality, one expertise, whether it is customer support, whether it is design, whether it is marketing, and in that marketing, especially customer acquisition related. By the way, Preeti, growth product manager is a very hot area today. If you go and yeah. just find it, right? Now, growth product manager is a fancy word for what product marketing managers and digital marketers used to be. It's yeah. just that you now, you know, transfer that in the context of a product and focus on customer acquisition strategy. So absolutely possible to do that. Okay. Sure. Uh, so, Preeti, uh, so Preeti, you know, just to add to, uh, you know, your question on the window as well, you know, sure. uh, you, you asked about uh, what kind of research, right? If you look Correct. at it, uh, if you look at it, uh, data, is a vital to a product manager and all forms of data, right? So mm -hmm. it is very important to know, understand how to conduct a market research, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, what, would, uh, what is the tool that you would use uh, to compile and analyze that data? And then how do you interpret all the data 
from these tools that you uh, you use. So data is a very important aspect and that proficiency in research and analysis will help mm -hmm. you be a better product manager. So it's very important that, uh, you know, that familiarity of, uh, you know, research will really help you. And since you are from a marketing background, you, you, you would definitely have a certain unique skills from a marketing perspective that will help you, you know, uh, be more successful as a product manager. So on the chat window, I asked, especially uh, the question belong to you, you actually, when you mentioned uh, that research skill is required. Correct, so correct. I wanted to understand in specific, those research, you know, generally the market research is done uh, through surveys and when okay. we do it for a product or service even, or a customer sat surveys, generally we do where we get a lot of feedback for, for our services. So okay. I have been into services business. So I wanted to understand, is it a primary research are you talking Both. about? Or Both. the whole primary data research, point, you know, if a big organization is there, I know that. More importantly, Sorry. analysis of that information. Okay, okay. Right. Got it. You know, today now, you can now buy I, research yeah. data. Yeah. Now I could understand. Yeah, relate. Okay, sure. Over to you, Shamna, for the next one. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks. So the next one we'll take from the QA window. This question is from Rohit Nagpal. When you're hiring for a PM and it is not for a purely technical area, what are those one or two non-negotiable skills or qualities that you look for in a product manager candidate who is coming from a non-tech background? I, I would not take much long to answer this because I think I've already answered that, okay. right? So the five areas that I believe are going to be non-negotiable for a product manager. Now, if you ask five other people, they may give you five other skills, right? But to me, that's why I'm not specifically focusing on this particular skill. There, to me, there are competencies, right? A group of skills, if you will. So hence customer context, business context, market context, and there are specific skills within that. And apart from the core product skills, the technical curiosity, the storytelling and getting things done. That's it to me. Do you have uh, any other things to add to that? Go ahead. So, uh, so we'll go with you. Rohit, uh, uh, I hope that answered. Yeah. Sure, we'll so, take this next question from Sujit Nair. Sujit, yeah. please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hi. Hi, Satya. Hi, Satish. Hi. hi. Good evening. Uh, see, my question is basically, uh, I just before I ask that question, I just wanted to set the background. Uh, question is basically, I, I am an ex-banker, uh, 12 years of experience in the banking domain, and then I shifted from the banking to IT and started my IT career uh, from testing basically, and then shifted to product management. Uh, now it is more than 10 years that I am, I, I'm, I'm working in as a product manager. And, but there are issues which I face on a day-to-day -day basis at times or on, on, on a monthly basis, I will face it or on a half yearly basis. Hourly face. basis is what I would be <laughs> characterizing. So, so the, 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 the issue is basically coming from the tech part basically the tech part why why i atten uh, why i'm attending also is because of that part only so the technical skills i cannot code to be very frank i am i am not going to but i can understand the technology uh, as of now whatever i have did i understood the technology that okay what is the deliverable coming up and i am trying to enhance my technical skills with respect to the technology not from the coding perspective at this age i am not going to do a coding at all that is very clear with me from the career perspective. But I, 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 I have tried to do some something with respect to say Python or something. I just wanted to get into that part. Now the issue is basically when I am doing this part and interacting as a product manager with the dev people. And there are organizations where the product management is not handled by the product manager, but the development. Product manager will be only just passing on the information to them and they will drive it how to handle a situation something like that because from from any 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 product life cycle the product owner is the owner basically he he product owner and the product manager drives the product basically it is not the development development needs to only build that part they can come Execute. up with the technology things and that but that doesn't happen it it's the other way around that whatever we will suggest that they will get a picture of that part and they will 
they will they will uh, modulate it in their own manner and it will go to the customer in a different manner the customer will come back with the original requirement what we have given mm -hmm. how to handle this in any organization because i have faced this for a very long time now uh, from the time i have been so i think i think you know this is a, again a, a very important question and often commonly asked question but um, um, sujit i think you know many many companies have very effectively solved this and i'll tell you you know i i used to run uh, have the same situations for a long time so you know we went for some off site and this and that and what not but eventually what worked is very simple uh, first of all defining the uh, providing clarity in role is important for the team members right uh, now there will be always experts who are not in the product role and you should respect that right we should the engineers are specialists now you might come back and say but uh, but sai you know if we ask something they will come back with 3 months 6 months estimates now that's a separate problem right but Correct. acknowledging that every team every member has a role to play a key role to play uh, a pm is a person who is going to orchestrate this right not Correct. dictate this no authority Correct. here exactly. absolutely no authority only influence right so Correct. that's very important part now in this context if the there is no clarity about what is the specific things that needs to be done and the benefit behind it or the purpose behind it is not there is where you see a lot of these misunderstanding misinterpretations that happen and even you know even how much ever you do you can't prevent it by the way right there are still going to be gaps yes and hence putting in a mechanism in place to actually do repeated frequent checking right that's why you have these agile processes coming in now i know in our country in many companies there is agile and then there is agile right so <laughs> but, but then yes. we have to but we, we we really have to i mean that's a that's a really good tool right the the continuous integration continuous development continuous deployment is to catch issues early right not that now i i know this is digressing from the current topic so i would suggest that we you know hopefully if not sujit we can talk about this at a long conversation one on one another time but yes uh, sujit definitely please scan the qr code on the screen and get a one on one session with mrs sai yeah. sateesh i think we should just take uh, two more good uh, you know so questions while you scan for that i want to quickly summarize one thing i see several questions saying i am in ba i am in project management can i get into what i strongly encourage all of you is i believe there have been similar such ask me anything webinars done very specifically for those roles right business analyst to product manager project management to product manager so i encourage you to go and look it up it's there on youtube i'm sure you will find it and if you have still further questions you know use this mechanism where you can get to speak to the coach part as well right so that way we can just trying to focus on uh, the pertinent topic and the questions that we have here yeah two more questions shama if you can no, yeah. two more yeah so i was just scrolling through the question there are like four questions circling around the same thing and i think we need to address that okay so uh, they all are around the global certification that can be recommended for someone who possesses the non tech skills yeah. mentioned hmm. or uh, i'll just read out one question though i have been doing some certification courses on product management i have close to 4 years of consulting storytelling product development experience hmm. i've been looking for jobs i need better uh, certifications which one would you recommend hmm. great question and satya let me take uh, let you uh, take this and then i can answer it go ahead if you want no sir you you start off and i'll uh, i'll just okay. add uh, to okay sure so you know my honest opinion in this certifications is i have never hired somebody because they have a certification right now certifications are good i am not saying don't do that right uh, i have a, a very different view like it's like an insurance policy you know it is bad if you don't have it but if it is have it don't hope, hope don't use it right but it's good to good to get some recognition on that what i'm saying is don't pin your hopes on a certification that uh, hopes of a job or a transition on certification but what you should be more focusing on is what i was saying in three things skill building portfolio building and demonstration of that portfolio 
whichever role you come from whichever area that you come from right build your skills and there is a method to that building that skills which is not just watching videos listening to some lectures but get your hands dirty get your hands dirty in the context of building that product portfolio now designers understand the value of this portfolio right they don't rely on linkedin profile or or resumes or anything they rely on a portfolio right similarly you build a product portfolio it's not difficult but of course you should do this particular structured learning in a place that provides you environment for building that portfolio right yeah go ahead absolutely sir so so just to add to what sir said so the environment is needed so the uh, it, it goes to again my saying you know knowing is not doing doing is doing and achieving so if you're not able to convert uh, the uh, the interview uh, into a role for yourself so it uh, it could be uh, because of several factors right so one thing is you you know the product management key jargon and concepts right have you done it have you actually failed you know in 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 putting a product into from an inception to you know in production so it's very important like we mentioned getting an environment where you're able to actually perform that role and see how you can develop those skills and position yourself in in the interviews going forward so yep. knowing is not doing and doing is doing and achieving and, and sometimes we are stuck right i mean we have to acknowledge that sometimes we get stuck at certain places and this is where a coaching so having somebody to go to and get that coaching becomes very important Correct. right so look at this holistically and you can look at any pro but you know we are talking right now uh, uh, the organized by ipl and there are these certification programs which uh, offer all of these things together so you know definitely take a look at it at least explore and try and understand ask the tough questions to see how is this going to really help me right so that is an important part of this thing yeah good so i'm sorry i have a hard stop in like 2 minutes uh, but uh, is there anything else that you want to address shama any other questions that you want to pick uh, if we have the time then definitely but uh, i think we are good to go uh, uh, mr vedant so let's let's Because take we... la one last question yeah let's okay. one last question. should i ask somebody to come online or from the q and a yeah if they are ready absolutely i think they i see some folks raising hands okay. let's sure so ajay please go ahead and ask your question yeah hi uh thank you sir thanks for the acting some of the questions are answered directly uh so i have a completely bit different question i come from a strong technical background mm -hmm. but the challenge what is is i see that the what are skills you have mentioned i don't have those things mm -hmm. like some kind of uh, negotiation so mm -hmm. i have an idea i can put it but getting that idea convinced and con converting into a product mm -hmm. that's a skill what uh, which one can get only if yes. he has the practical experience yes if you ask me to develop something on a good out of it yeah i can do it and uh, <clears throat> the other question is on like uh, uh, there is no report is to a product manager mm. right but still the uh, ownership and the success of the product depends on the product team mm -hmm. and the challenge what i see in my career in some of the companies where i have worked uh, many times product manager comes with a vision but when it comes to the implementation the priorities keep changing and we lose the focus what we actually want to build mm -hmm. maybe the feature is good but that's not what the customer is actually looking for it mm -hmm. so how uh, as a pm we should handle that one i think you have answered a couple of things but uh, uh, i'm there, seeing there is a whole five month course developed around it oh, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, right now, now yeah. good questions uh, short answer to it right one is okay. you know if you know that you don't have those skills that itself is a very important step recognizing that we don't have skills is a first important step to take okay right now next question is how do i get that skill right often right. we think that by reading few things by learning from you get you know there are different levels of learning right the first level is called literacy level meaning you know the buzzwords because you read some blogs you watch some youtube videos you caught on that phrases and then you can use it right right so the first one is awareness the next one is literacy you can have a nice dinner conversation using all these nice jargons without me knowing anything <coughs> about it 
many people do this right consultants by the way especially do that no 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 disrespect to them but yeah. uh, they do an amazing <laughs> job at that right and the third one is a skill level which is where now you need to go through a structured way of learning and we talked about applying that learning so find a place and get that skill acquire that skill that is the only way to get it okay. right yeah. and and of course practical experience is important so do you want to jump into real world situation not learning the set of skills believe me including negotiation influencing all of these things that we talk about have proven methodologies proven frameworks that you can learn practice and then get into real world otherwise my friend you are going to create some severe consequences right yeah right? So, sure okay the yeah, pin question you. unfortunately we don't have time for that it's a very long winded thing i can give you okay um, no problem sir okay. yeah so satya final words from you so so final words here uh, so first of all thank you all for joining this uh, session and you know uh, want to let you know that hey there are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there are uh, technical product managers do exist and non technical product managers also do exist Absolutely. and they will never become obsolete let's be very clear about that so it's very important to harness the core product management uh, learning and expertise uh, and it's very important to have practical knowledge and use whatever you've learned in theory in practice that will help you become a better product manager yeah i think you know that reminds me of one instance where a few years ago i actually had to hire a pianist as i hired a pianist as a product manager right why everybody was looking crazy why are you hiring a musician to become a product manager in this hardcore technical area uh, the way i thought about it is look i already have five product managers who know the technology who know the domain who know the all of these things what i want is a customer perspective uh, an empathy that shows and i found it in this person right so many companies are very open to look at this of course probably not as extreme as a pianist but still non technical right so absolutely do it right okay with that uh, i think uh, thank you all and shama did you have any any quick uh, announcements to make i will go ahead with the announcement so the most important one is audience i'm sorry we're not able to take all the questions but we have made so many other platforms available for you the first one is be, is on your screen right now please scan the qr code or click on the link in the chat window for a one on one session expert opinion session 30 minute coaching session with our uh, uh, with mr vedam or uh, our expert panel and apart from that in view of the time constraints we'll have to end the q and a here thanks for the enthusiasm and participation audience product management thank you so much guys right so product management is not a subject that you can cover uh, uh, within an hour and hence uh, you know uh, we have made various platforms available like on the screen so reach out to us on our website for detailed information on the icpm flex program you can also email us at engage@ipl.edu.in thank you mr prasad mr vedam for taking the time off of your busy schedule to share your valuable insights it was a pleasure having you here thank you and, and i'm you. yes <laughs> thank you so much thanks satya bye thank you thank you sir thank you all and audience thank you for joining in it was great interacting with you all do not forget to register for the upcoming insights 21 webinar series with that note i end tonight session happy learning and stay skilled have a great night thank you sir